little bit of a while since we've done any updates for the farm here. Of course, winter time is a pretty slow period of time just in general, and had about three weeks of being sick, and uh, before that holidays, before that second son was being born, so not a lot of time for such things. Uh, did want to give a, a little update on to where we're at for the winter, and you can kind of see the cows and the goats are leaving at about three inches, a little bit lower than I would like for the field they just left down here, this major field. All that brighter green is where they've eaten it down. Still still some on there. You can kind of see that over there. There's still some left that they could have had. We've got a little burst of growth, just the amount of consistent rain and some sun mixed in, cold temperatures, but not freezing, so grass isn't entirely dormant. Um, that apple over there has got some apples, so it's a crab apple that's got some real staying power. They're still pretty crisp even. Clark's been enjoying it. I've been bringing those into him. What I wanted to show you today was kind of the cost of uh, not necessarily staying on top of things a little bit. Had everything ready to winter down and uh, went through a good amount of grass hay feed while the grass was recovering uh, from, you know, the summertime when it was dead. And uh, just started getting back out to pasture recently, about uh, two weeks ago now, and I've kind of pushed them through pretty fast through each of these fields. There wasn't a whole lot there. And uh, so the animals weren't out here on this entire crest of hillside, all the way over from the barn. They were in the sacrifice yard, so they weren't up here. They weren't over here. They weren't down there. And this is, this is the crest of hill where it abuts a forest, and that forest is uh, chock full of wild animals, deer, coyote, so forth and so on. Um, those two being the real concerns. Coyote because uh, they'll, they'll kill goats. <clears throat> I've never seen them personally kill a calf, but I've heard it can happen. Um, but they will, they will kill goats and sheep. I have yet to see any signs of them on my property. Um, which is which is great. Pretty good fence line, not perfect, but only a few places of entry really. And then uh, uh, also the deer. So obviously, I uh, talked about this fence line here. It's eight feet tall on this entire upper run, and over here it's more like six and a half feet tall coming down this hillside. But I, I tried to slant it to provide some extra deterrent because deer will jump high, but they won't jump high and far. So, being, being in a spot where I wasn't paying attention to the farm as much as I should have, other than feeding the animals in the barn, for more than a month, uh, create a situation. I had a fence charger that was dead at the charger, but was still showing an output, and I was not checking my fence line. So, it was saying it was charging the fence, and it was not. And what that, what that meant was the deer learned to disrespect the fence. And I was really surprised that the animals hadn't, except that the, the sacrifice paddock is all woven wire with just some additional supporting electric fence, so that'd be why. So they were jumping in just right down here. See these two extra tall posts, this one and then this one? Um, no, just kidding. That one and that one. Those are the last two extra talls, a full, a capable of a full eight feet that I had. They're pretty expensive, but I really need to run this whole line in those. When I when I move it to include the next section of orchard, I, I will. Um, I will do that. Um, the other thing I've been toying with is just converting the entire perimeter. It's already done down here. Just converting the entire perimeter along that roadway and then up along the neighbors all the way to there. Uh, at least down to here, and then coming up through this center spine, because I'm already intending to replace this post down to that, just past that apple tree this year, so I may just put in the hard the hard woven wire down to there, and then run tall electric down to there, and then that, that will keep the deer out of a substantial portion of the the area, and, and it'll be the, all the areas that are going to be orchard within the next three to four years anyway. So it's kind of a, a good permanent option, uh, semi-permanent option. But uh, yeah, they were in here. So this is an example of what uh, deer will do. 
um, broke off several branches and pretty well desecrated the uh, this apple tree, this leader branch that I was going to have be this, the main trunk. So I'm going to have to retrain, prune it, retrain it, try and get another main leader. Um, I, I cannot imagine that that will survive that. The apple tree itself will, but that'll set me back a couple years. And there's a number of trees down further where they, they did as much or more damage. Um, this, this, I believe, is from a buck uh, trying to uh, work as horns on it. And search me why they don't use a bigger tree. Uh, but apparently my orchard is the perfect size of tree for them to rub their horns on. Uh, yeah, I could do without deer in my life for sure. But that's what this is for. And um, definitely a lesson learned as far as being diligent. You know, just being diligent about your about your ownership. I mean, there's a couple thousand dollars of work into this orchard already. And <coughs> they didn't do too much damage yet. Um, before they started um, roughing up their horns on the trees, they weren't doing a whole lot just because uh, the leaves had already all fallen. And so a lot of the trees were already dormant and they didn't bother them. And uh, I think we probably only lost maybe two trees that are beyond salvage. Um, but some of the others may show that in the spring. Here's a pretty beat up little autumn olive, but uh, it's mostly just this one side and then some of the peripheral. So I'll just, I'll cut that back if it, uh, which it probably will if it needs it. And, uh, and then it should be fine. Um, yeah, so the, the animals now are, I did a little fence fixing on the very far side of the property. That entire side over there is all forest lot, with the exception of there is a pretty big grass field at the bottom. It's not very productive, poor ground, and, uh, a east facing on a, a hillside that basically precludes about four to six hours of sun. But, um... There's some good forage over there, probably about two weeks worth for them, and it's a low priority for me to to worry too much about it. So I may run them, at, run them to three, and just keep an eye on it and see if it'll it'll last them for three. I think that should be enough for the hillside up here to be ready for its next rotation. Um, the first paddock there, uh, it's been two weeks already, and it's slow growth this time of year. So we'll see. I may have to supplement back in some hay. I'm hoping to keep that cost down as much as I can. I don't have a whole lot of, of animals just now, so uh, we'll see. It's possible that that may, that may work. That may be something that I'm able to do. Um, haven't had any further damage from any other pests, which is nice. Um, I mostly right now trying to, you can see that I, I don't even remember if I made a video of this, but this hillside here I did, uh, I did rip. I haven't gotten back through and kind of squished it back down a little bit and, and fixed up the trenching, but um, man, I'm already seeing a big difference this year to last year. The water just ran down this hillside, and we haven't hit our wettest season yet, but there's been some pretty wet stretches, and uh, this section up in here, it was just a pond. It was it was truly a pond, and there's there's no water up there right now. You probably see that, saw that earlier when I was up by that apple tree. Um, there's no water up there at all. It's It's sinking into the ground, as it should. Um, the grass here is really lush, and uh, one of my one of my desires for coming years is to be able to do something with this. And I don't know whether that will be a fall harvest um, in between the rows. It's very likely it'll be pig. So I am planning on grabbing, getting some pigs and. From what I hear, the pigs and probably the cows, they have long necks and that's a problem, but especially in this narrow, like these are really narrow rows here. I, I won't replicate that over here. They're much wider, another four or so, four to five, six feet. But uh, definitely, I think I, can, I should be able to run pigs through here. Um, and if not, I want to try and see if, at least with a lot of these rows, if I can harvest this uh, the in between the grass in some fashion. Um, and just supply that, you know, in as a feed. It's it's not swathable. There's a few there's a few rows. These upper rows are. This row will be once I get it leveled a little better. And then and then the lower rows. There's probably just this one, that one, and the next one. 
that are too tight to get a tractor with a swath or maybe maybe but I'm, I'm gonna probably say no so we'll see I'm still coming up with exactly how I want to run that if nothing else I can always do um layer hands and I think that would be something that I would be keenly interested in and and want to want to work with so we'll see um how that goes I've been planning 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 always planning Someday I'll, I'll pull up the file when, I'm, when I feel ready for it and show you my planning document. It's an Excel file. It's quite substantial, but planning out what I'm putting in. So as you, as you probably saw from earlier videos and just talking with me, most of what is in here right now is the trees. I don't have a whole lot of, of bush or vines or any of that planted in yet. And that was, that was by design. That was intentional because the trees take that much longer to come to fruiting age. So it makes sense. But uh, planning in, seeing as how much I can afford to put in. A lot of raspberry, a lot of blueberry, so ma mainly bushberry, vineberry, things that are going to take a while um, to fruit. And then uh, it's looking like we'll have the budget maybe next year for ground cover um, or perhaps the fall strawberries and that sort of thing. And uh, some of the wrap up in here, I'm hoping I can manage in the fall. So. But yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now and what's going on. I'm just about done with my paternity leave and about ready to head back to work. And hopefully, hopefully over this cold, it has really, really thrown me for a loop. Um, not been pleasant at all. I'll show you some of the other spots of deer damage. This one really made me sad because uh, they just knocked a bunch of big branches off of this. Um, I was really excited about this tree, and it may still make it. It's a favor, Flavor King Pluot, and uh, boy, they roughed it up good. I think it'll be it'll be okay, but I had it in a really nice shape and took the time to prune it, and it was one of the ones that I was able to do that with, and I was excited, but we'll just see how that goes. A lot of nice buds coming on these trees, which is very heartening, and... Uh, Remarkably, still a few little straw flowers and other things hanging on through the winter. We've had frosts. They're still just hanging in there. Let's see. What else we have here? These rows down here are all going to get filled in with this, uh, this spring. So there's uh, four rows there that need, need to filled in. They did just a teeny bit of damage on this tree. Not much at all. And they came after this locust, which if they're going to go after a tree, then by golly, that's the one I would have wanted them to come out. You can see that, that broken up, roughed up branch there. I think they probably got poked a little bit and decided to move on. Yeah, let's see. There was one more down this way. That was disheartening to me. Hmm. Not seeing it right now. Oh, yeah, there we go silverberry this is a spring fruiting tree and look what they did this is an evergreen they roughed up these branches so well here so hopefully hopefully it uh, recovers from that i think it will they just kind of decided whether they wanted to eat it or not i think ultimately decided not but really did some pretty bad damage yeah here's here's another one this one will make it They've ripped off, well, actually, maybe it won't. Yeah, we'll see. This cherry lost a lot of the cambium. You can see that right there. A lot of that, that trunk is skinned. So we'll find out if this, this uh, cherry makes it or not. That's a real shame. That was a cherry, a uh, rainier. Real big one too. Nice, nice healthy stock. Put on a lot of growth this last year. So we'll see. But uh, cost of uh, <laughs> not uh, paying attention. So yeah, we'll get these planted in this spring. This is going to be a, kind of a void space right here, and that's so you can get up through here and maneuver. I'm hoping to have that be an area where, at, in the future, I can just have uh, for easy access into the orchard and. People can come in and kind of pull in and back up to the tree and dump into here and then and then go. And I can just leave this gate open if I know they're coming. 
and uh, make it real easy, you know. And yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking for there, but if nothing else, easy enough to get in and turn and whatnot. I've been working a lot, you probably can see that there. That fence line is clean. Buzzing the blackberries down has been a big project. A lot of this, this is basically all that's done, left that I need to do, I'd hope to do before the end of my vacation. Uh, well, paternity leave. Yeah, not really a vacation per se. So, yeah, that's about what's left. Not much, One less than one tank, a lot less than one tank. And then this whole fence line over here along the main road is done too. So I did get a few things done, just a little bit at a time each day. Kids are sleeping or whatnot. Main season's definitely yet to come, and it'll be interesting to see what uh, what the year brings and get all these plants planted. Look at this. Look at this little crazy straw flower. Look at that guy. So, yeah. All right, well, see you the next time.